back again to Shishnie with some daily guidance, weekly, maybe monthly, yearly, or whenever she decides to do a, a guided reading. Um, today's topic, I decided to talk about things that I pay attention to and see in the world and kind of come to an understanding as well as connecting with my God and <clears throat> higher power spirit um, to try to come to an understanding of what's really going on. And there's definitely got to be a lot more going on in the world than we know, um, than a lot of people are open to um, <clears throat> or even understanding. But a little bit of what I've been seeing as well as myself, um, I've been noticing a lot of long-term relationships, marriages, um, coming to an end within these past few years it was kind of like the ball up and then 2020 is kind of like the kaboom like it's done like new person like you change like it's everybody's going through this form of not everybody the majority of people that I've been seeing um is going through this form of transformation it's dark and it's scary it definitely is especially when you're so used to a routine with someone for so long and being so dependent codependent with someone um it's scary. It's definitely scary um, leaving something that you once knew and to step into something that you're not used to, as well as like sacrificing yourself. Like you don't know who you are anymore. Um, and that's another reason why half of these relationships are kind of like ending. Um, <clears throat> my belief, my belief, I'm going to say it again, my beliefs are that God is somewhat aligning us up into who we were supposed to be, what our calling is upon this earth, and to get our asses rolling, um, to be with who we're supposed to be in order to make the world what it's supposed to be. And it goes all the way up to the White House, all the way to Trump and Obama and all that stuff too, and I can get deeper too, but I probably won't do that today. Um, so a lot of long-term relationships, marriages, etc., are coming to an end or have came to an end where people are now trying to discover who they really are, what they really want, what they really like, um, being stuck to the toxic relationships that they've been in because I kind of consider it as like karmic relationships, a relationship that you needed to go through in order to bring out a part of yourself, in order for you to become what you become, certain things are going to hurt you because it needed to hurt you. It, you needed to be hurt in that area in order to grow from it, to be who you need to be. So if you feel like it's a failure, it's not. It's not. It's only rebuilding you. And I just don't want anybody out there heartbroken and grieving. I mean, I'm not saying you're not going to grieve because hell yeah, that shit hurts. But to stand strong and understand it's all towards your growth. It's all towards who you're supposed to be. Um, but the thing is, are you going to sit there and play victim and cry around or fight for that person back? Or, or are you going to understand why you were with that person in the first place? Instead of looking at them and hating them and not liking them, understanding that they're learning lessons within themselves too, not just you. So it's two victims. <laughs> I'm going to say victims for right now. So it's two victims. So don't think that you're the victim and that person's not the victim or that person, both of you are because it takes two to create a relationship. It takes two to create a relationship. Um, Just was that what hurts you probably doesn't hurt that person, but what hurts that person probably doesn't hurt you. So that's where indifferences can also come out. I feel like... Not only... Are we starting to find ourselves more? We are starting to become who we're supposed to be based off of the past pain that we just went through. Um, sorry, I had to gather my thoughts because every time this camera comes on, I lose my train of thought every time. This is like take three, maybe four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, but who knows? Nobody will ever know. So please forgive me. Plus, I like to connect with my God and he tells me things that I should share. And it took a lot for me to be open about that. Speaking of myself, a lot of people may say it's narcissistic, but I can only speak about myself because I know myself best. Um, of course.
course, I was in a long-term relationship. It changed me. It brought things out of me that I didn't think existed in me. Um, I realized that I was actually changing to be perfect for that person instead of learning to love myself. I was starting to do things that that person liked and wanted instead of doing things for myself. And I did it out of love. I did it out of love, thinking that that's what love is, is basically being the perfect person for somebody. <clears throat> when really, it's all about being the per perfect person for you. Because you can't go into a relationship with trust issues, past relationship issues, even though it hurts you. It's supposed to teach you something. But what did you learn about it? But at the same time, it's going into a next relationship with an open mind and understanding that that person is not the same person as what the other person was before. Um, I lost myself. Um, I became somebody who I didn't know who I was. I was once 300 pounds. Yes, I was 300 pounds. Um, thinking that that's what that person liked and I was uncomfortable with it but as long as I was seeking that validation that that's what that person wanted I was happy just as long as I had their validation because I depended on that person to make me happy but was I really happy inside no I mean I had everything I wanted uh and it's kind of crazy that I'm even talking about this right now because I don't share my private life with anybody but I'm not going to mention any names. And so nobody knows who it is. Um, was I happy inside? No. I had everything I wanted. Wonderful man. Very wonderful. Great man. Um, so I used to think, what is it that I'm missing? Why am I depressed? Why am I sad? Until God steps in and shakes shit up and kind of redirects you somewhere else and <clears throat> he knows how you how you work but you don't know how you work unless you find out how you work so that's how god gets you god will manipulate you like i know what you like and i know what you didn't heal from i know what makes you weak and i'm gonna get you with that because you need to make a change in your life you pray for this you pray for that i'm gonna give it to you you weren't specific about it but i'm gonna give it to you and it's gonna hurt a little bit because you gotta wake up to yourself and your ego and your pride and order to see yourself in order to see yourself that's when you find out what you are here on this earth to be called for um but you don't know what you're here to be called for if you don't know who you are so of course god's going to put you through these lessons of teaching you about yourself and sometimes teaching you about yourself has to hurt you has to hurt your heart just a little bit easier said than done Then once you learn yourself, you realize that relationship that you're in wasn't what you really needed. Realizing things can be toxic and it, it may seem all happy and you can <clears throat> play fake to the world that you're happy and nobody would ever know besides you and your partner. Nobody would ever know. But then again, you're lying to yourself. So if you got to lie about your happiness... What is it that's not happy about it? What is it that you're missing? Who, who who are you? Like, what is it that you like? Instead of liking the things that the other person likes, just to seek their validation and approval. Oh, this person likes race cars. I'm going to like race cars too. I like you. No. You're changing yourself because you... <clears throat> First of all, you know, yes, don't like race cars. You think they're annoying as shit, but you want to let you like that person. So what is it that you like about that person? Um, they do say opposites attract. Opposites do attract. But at the same time, can they work? But at the same time, if you're too much of the same people, there's no balance. So opposites do attract, but it's discovering that balance. What balance in your past relationships? Um... What imbalance did it bring? Because that's a great place to start. And understanding why you're imbalanced in that area. Let's say, I like to use zodiac signs. So in case nobody here really knows about me, I'm 
I like the zodiac signs and it's just so fun. So we're gonna use the example because this is my page. This is my YouTube and I'm gonna talk about what the hell I wanna talk about. So, balance. And I will use Taurus as one only because one, I'm a Taurus, hello. And I know Taurus best because I am one. Um, and then I'll use, what's another one? We'll do one that's a balance and imbalance. And then we'll talk about what we mean by balancing all things. And this is only the sun sign. It gets deeper than that, y'all. Just to let y'all know. Because then you'd be like, well, I know this one. And I like that, that. They're not like this. And I like this one. And I'm this. And I'm not like that. I'm like this. And We're all different. Okay? And we all have a different birth chart. Okay, so back to the topic. <clears throat> so when I talk about the balance in a relationship, let's say for Tauruses, we crave stability. Um, we are the ruler of Venus, love and money. So we love to love and we love money and we love food. And I'm fasting right now, so it kind of sucks. But anyways, we love money, we love food, we love... Um, we are very emotional people, so we need somebody who can understand our emotions. Um, usually, for example, it's an example, but it's a good example because it's like a real life, not real life, like, you know what I mean? But anyways, okay, let's say Tauruses, we crave stability. We crave beautiful things. We like to relax. Um, we're very feminine people, even the men. Um, but love and money. And then let's say my person was an Aries. The very fiery people. <clears throat> They're very fiery people. Very passionate. Um, more so action-based people. They'd rather go out and do things and do things in the brink of a moment in a Taurus. Like, mm, let's just cuddle. Have a hot bath. Let's make love. Come on. <laughs> but scratch that. Eh. Take three. Maybe. <laughs> Bad example. Okay, all about balance. I'm going to use Taurus and Capricorn because I have a whole bunch of Capricorn friends. Hey. They bring me balance. They are my people's team earth. Team earth. My right ear is Reagan. I wonder why. Um, so balance. Okay, me and Taurus, we tend to procrastinate a lot. Um, we procrastinate, but we are master planners. We like to think about things, and but it's just getting us to do it, to execute it. Um, we're very much in our heads a lot. Um, we think a whole lot. Um, we are very emotional people. Um, but then where Capricorns kind of balance us out. Capricorns are very ambitious people, almost have like this restless leg syndrome. Um, always on the go, always trying to strive to achieve something, always on the next project, going, going, going. Sometimes they don't take that time to sit down and plan it. They're just ready to go. Like, they think as they go. Like, they just, whatever comes to mind, they're just going to go do it. So, where a Taurus and a Capricorn kind of balances out. <clears throat> All my Capricorn homegirls, hey! I love y'all. <laughs> um, is, let's say a Taurus has a plan. A Taurus has a plan. One thing about Tauruses and Capricorn, we hold each other accountable for what we say we're going to do. I love that. We can be procrastinators, master planners, but getting us to execute is the issue. But that's where Capricorns come in. Negative traits and all. People like to say Capricorns are very argumentative people. Well, they can say Tauruses can be too. But anyways, very argumentative people. But me as a Taurus, I appreciate that. A lot of Tauruses will probably be like, I can't stand them. They argue too much about everything. I get it. But if you think about it, if you use that negative personality trait as a benefit, create a balance. It's all about perception. I look at Capricorns as like, okay, with that argumentative thing, and I say that I'm going to do something and I want to do it, but getting me to do it, Capricorns are all on top of you like, 
I got an idea. Why don't you start off like this? Why don't you start this? You didn't do it. How come you didn't do it? I wonder why you didn't do it. You had all day to do it. You had all week to do it. How come you didn't do it? How come it's not done? It is 7.30. Why not? Why not? And it's like, in my mind, shut the fuck up. <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to do it just to shut you up because I don't want to hear your mouth tomorrow. So yeah, I may not like it, but I like it. <laughs> um, do I want that all the time? No, not really. But I'm, I'm, it's just an example. So it's all about going back to like the relationships and everything. Um, I like to look at zodiac signs as like a compatibility wise of what the weaknesses and the strengths are. So how I kind of like determined mine was I looked at where we were imbalanced. I'm a very emotional person. The person that I was with, I'm not going to say their zodiac sign, but they weren't so, I'm not saying that they weren't emotional, but they weren't on the emotional side to understand my emotions, especially it's a man too, like, come on. So that's where my issue arised. That person's issue arised, maybe lack of physical activity. Lack of physical activity can probably tend to trigger certain insecurities to think that this is going on, this is going on, and their mentality and how they think about things. And definitely that sign's personality traits, because I see it in a lot. <laughs> but I'm not saying it's a negative thing. I'm not saying they're a bad person. Absolutely not. We're all just different. And it's about what works and what doesn't work. But having that separation and everything, it hurt. It definitely hurt. It woke up to, because again, you feel bad. You were with that person for so long and things just didn't work out. And it's it, it's hard. It was hard um, to like detach. Because it's like ripping off a band-aid that's been stuck to your skin for five years. And it just was glued on to your skin. But uh, it wake, that pain will wake you up to understanding yourself and what it is that you need out of a relationship in order for your relationship to strive. But you don't really know what you need out of a relationship if you don't have that experience. It sounds bad, but not in a bad way. Because how do you know what you want if you don't try it? How do you know what you need if you don't have the experience or know what you don't want or what you do want if you don't go through shit? Um... <clears throat> Uh, so back to trying to heal your broken heart don't look at it as like a failure or you weren't good enough no because sometimes God just got to step in and do things in order to put you on a different path but are you going to follow that path or are you going to linger on the past because you never know sometimes it can redirect you right back to that person but sometimes it's like you know what got to take that break and you got to go learn some things and then whoop, right back up but then the ones who don't want that, it teaches you about yourself and what you do want and what you don't want. And if it's toxic, don't go back to it. Don't go back to it if it's toxic. Because you're not learning your lessons, your cycles. You're going to continue to always continue to be hurt. If you keep allowing just that thought of the routine and what you're used to and being scared of the unknown, don't let the fear of the unknown stop you i mean keep you stuck somewhere where you don't want to be because again like i said you'll continue to get hurt until you learn that lesson because sometimes people are there for a lesson and some are for a blessing and to be honest each lesson is a blessing so it's like don't even regret not ever meeting somebody or running into somebody because they showed you a side of you that each person will bring out differently in you Unless you learn your lessons. If you don't learn your lessons, then that person's going to keep bringing it out. And you're going to be like, oh, nobody liked me. They keep doing the same thing to me. Well, change yourself. Look at what you're attracted to. Like, understand. Try to understand why it's happening to you. Understand why you keep attracting that same type of person into your life. And then calling it love. When really, more so, half the time here, let's go. We're going to change the subject a little bit. <clears throat> That's where toxic relationships start is not being in control of your emotions and your logic, not having that balance with that. Because when you don't have your balance with that and you let your emotions speak for your life, then you tend to try to find the next quick thing to 
calm your emotions, rebalance, jumping into the next relationship because it's like when your mind is addicted to something and not having it available, you try to find the next thing to like kind of kind of like smoking cigarettes and trading off to vaping because you think you're done vaping. You're, it's still toxic, if that makes sense. It's jumping to the next thing to satisfy that emotion. So that's where people tend to have rebounds or jumping into another relationship right away. That's why I say it's very healthy to have that break out of a re every relationship to kind of like reflect. Use that time to reflect off of that relationship. Do some self work, some inner work, some deep healing work and learn more things about you. So then that way, when you do go into the next relationship, you know you're not just jumping right into the next one, which you don't know what you're just blind eyed to and just hey let's wing it let's take the risk not even knowing yourself still because some people will leave that not knowing what to do instead of taking that time to just grieve and heal and put yourself back together reflect off of that relationship they want to jump into the next thing that's going to make them feel better and keep going so then they end up attracting the same thing quick ju quickly jumping into something different and then quickly turning into something different i can guarantee it's probably not healthy because when have you had that time to yourself, that state of solitude to learn about yourself, to figure yourself out, to know who you are, what is it that you like instead of hurting because somebody broke your heart. Try to figure out why they broke your heart. Why was your heart, a, why was, how do I put it? Why did you allow your heart to be broken? I mean, I'm not going to say that it's not going to be broken. I'm not saying that at all. But when you come to that understanding and you heal, you're more clear-minded when you do go into the no an another relationship. Kind of remember red flags. Let's say you, if you were in an abusive relationship, the red flags that you saw, I'm not saying bringing your old baggage into your new baggage and accusing the next person of doing that. No, I'm not saying that. But at the same time, that's where your emotions in your gut and what God trying to talk to you also is telling you. Um, keeping that in mind also. But the relation, the long-term relationships that many of you are probably leaving or just got out of, I just see 22, 22, okay. Um, don't look at it as like that person hurting you. I don't even want you to blame yourself for hurting yourself or even getting into the situation you are. Look at it as something that you needed to learn about yourself. Why do you keep falling in love so easily? Why do you feel like you must compete if there's somebody else around? There's something within you that you are unhappy with yourself in order to keep wanting that thing. What is it that thing that keeps you stuck to that person? What is, because then that's how you can determine, was it just money? Was it real love? Was it because I was lonely? Was it because look at the fresh, look at the beginning of your relationship. Did you just come out of a relationship prior to that? And then that person just gave you the things that kind of like validated you and made you feel good. Because sometimes we all run off of just our emotion. We live, we live life based off of our emotion, which is not completely healthy. Um, because anybody can manipulate your emotions been there done that <laughs> um <clears throat> i don't know what else to say to be honest <laughs> but people can definitely become addictions relationships addictions are habits habits create personality traits and when you're around certain people for so long you tend to pick up their same personality traits sometimes even by the way somebody laughs you can like pick up their laugh style and or speak you can start to pick up their accent or language or whatever you like you just are um If the relationship is toxic and you know you are not yourself, you know you are not happy, 
I know a lot of people are going to come on here and be like, oh, you ruined our relationship. I'm not, but I'm just being real because there's people who just aren't real enough to just be like, hello. Um, so if people want to be upset with me about it, be upset with me about it. But a lot of the time people stay in relationships based off of history. Children, I completely understand. Um, that's a hard one. And I know a lot of people be like, you don't have kids, so you can't speak on that. I get it. I completely get it. I can somewhat understand, not to the extent of me having my own children and going through the same thing, no. But I can put myself in that position and understand to the best that I can. Um, but toxic is toxic. And if it's toxic to your mental health, you your mental health is everything. Your mind creates your emotions. Your emotions create your actions. Your actions create the reality around you. And if you're unstable in your mind, it's not a fun place to be. It is not a fun place to be. Everybody deserves happiness. Everybody, I mean, there's a lot of people who let a lot of outside things control them. Um, and it's hard because it's a scary thought. Like, okay, I'm out here on my own. What do I do? Where do I go? Who, who do I seek? And it's scary. And that's a part of growth. Um, it's very scary. It can be very dark sometimes. But having somebody who kind of understands helps and that's what I strive to do as I try to I strive to understand and help bring that guidance and clarity and peace of mind to help get through it but toxic is toxic and only you are in control of your life nobody's in control of your life but you and God or your higher power or whoever you believe in Nobody or nothing can control you. I'm not saying go neglect your kids. I am not saying that at all. Don't be no deadbeat parents out there. Still take care of your kids, but at the same time, don't hate your partner. And stop using kids as like weapons against certain parents because a parent doesn't want to be with a person because of their toxic, I mean, their mental health. A lot of people try to force um, and use kids as bait to force somebody to stay with them because they want them, but that person does not want to be with them because they are not healthy for them. And then the, that person ends up suffering, staying in the relationship because a lot of people, I mean, because that person can manipulate them and blackmail them, even with children, money, home, all of that. And it's a sad world and it's all because of validation, um, self-worth of validation. Is seeking that, knowing that you're good enough for that person. And by trying to control the situation and people, make them feel like they're worth more. Something that they can go hoo ha ra around and say that they got this person and they got that person. It's all for looks. But we need to pay attention to our own mental health. Whether the relationship is toxic or not, don't let nothing stop you. You are in charge of your own happiness. And especially don't expect nobody to make you happy because nobody's in charge of your happiness but you because you are in charge of what goes on in your mind and how you see things and perceive things and take things as it is. It's a hard road. It's a hard road out there. And it can be dark and rainy and scary and scared you're going to drown. But beauty's on the other side of that. But you can't find that beauty unless you just do it. And if you just learning about yourself, what is it that learning about yourself? I think I'm just speaking in circles now. Maybe I should just get off here because I think I'm just talking to talk. Um, take that time after a long term relationship, even any every relationship, take that time to reflect, do some inner healing, inner self work learn about yourself what is it that you learned about yourself what is it that you need out of a relationship actually need not want like he's gonna have this and he's gonna have nice teeth and he's gonna have a bmw no what is it about your personality that balances you out with the next person what is it what what the next person what type of balance do they bring to your life and if there ain't no balance and it's all the physical, then you're looking at relationships in a, the wrong way if you think it's from outside things. Money-wise, looks, just the way somebody sounds when they talk, it's different. What about their personality? 
what blessings do they bring? Where do, what are their negatives beneficial to yours? Just like what I said with Capricorns and being argumentative. Yeah, they're argumentative, but you got to take the good with the bad. You can't have all good and nobody's perfect. There's a good, bad, there's a good side and a bad side to every single personality trait. Good and bad. But a lot of people will tend to think that there's a perfect person out there that's got everything I want. You're still going to go through things. You're still going to notice that they don't have 100% the best traits and qualities that you dreamed of in your mental. Your Prince Charming who came to rescue you. It don't happen like that. It definitely doesn't happen like that. But it's like, what kind of balance can you seek with that person? Are you kind of lazy? And is this person kind of uppy to kind of get you to move? And then do you kind of balance this person out by getting them to learn how to relax? Or all about balance. So what did that relationship that just ended with you, what type of balance and imbalance did it bring you? And study that. Do some homework. And I guess I will see you in the next video because I just need to stop it because it's already 31 minutes and I'm just talking, just talking. I'm probably talking in circles, but I like to talk. So I'm just going to talk anyways. Five more seconds. All right. <laughs>